OK, hello and welcome everybody to tonight's virtual event focusing on our recruitment process. It's great to see so many of you joining us virtually and it's a real pleasure to be able to bring this session to you. So just to introduce myself before we delve into things, I'm Amy Arkwright. I'm one of the early careers managers here at our Manchester office. I've been at Owen Mitchell since June this year, but I've come over from uh, another law firm in a very similar role. So I've got around 10 years experience in early careers. I'm joined by a very exciting panel of trainees, partners and colleagues in the early careers team. And we'll be sharing lots of insights uh, to go through our recruitment process. And we do hope that you find it really valuable. So with me today, I've got Alex Burgess, also from our early careers team, and she's going to be talking through our recruitment process. I'm also joined uh, by Charney Dalwell, who's a partner in our serious injury team in London. Jenny Arrowsmith, a partner from our employment team in Leeds and Jason Newell from our reg team in Sheffield. They're assessors and they're going to share some insights into uh, how they assist us in our recruitment process. Last but not least, I'm joined by our amazing Birmingham trainees. We've got Amy Greenhall, who is doing a seat in real estate, sorry, real estate disputes. Callum Mackay, who is in our Birmingham office in a corporate seat. And Carolina Sibilska in medical negligence. And last but not least, we've got Aaron Ford, who's doing a seat in employment. All four of these trainees have obviously been successful in our process and they've also seen our change over to a strength based approach, which Alex will touch on a little bit later. So through it, throughout today's presentation today, we're going to hear from insights and tips in terms of the recruitment process. And as I say, hopefully you'll find it really valuable if you do decide to make an application. We will then wrap up with an opportunity for you to ask any questions that you may have. I know we've had quite a few questions pre-submitted and we've tried to weave those into the presentation. Uh, so hopefully we will cover those. Uh, if not, there will be an opportunity to follow up by your email with our early careers team. And again, Alex will go through that shortly. So next slide, please. So hopefully you know a little bit about Erwin Mitchell, but I just want to cover off some of our highlights uh, which will interest you. So we are a national firm and we were established in 1912 and we have over 3000 offices across 17 offices throughout the UK. Um, you should be able to see that there are um, 11 offices where we um, hire our trainees and at at any one stage, we typically have around 100 trainees on our programme, so that normally equates to around 50 in our first year and 50 in our second year. So we re really are proud to support all those colleagues and testament to that is that we've been, sorry, been ranked top 20 in the great places to work in the UK. We've also been ranked top 20 in the best places to work for women and also awarded great place to work for well-being. So hopefully that gives you a flavour of what we're about and some of our values. So in terms of uh, the work we do for our communities, uh, we have raised over three million pounds in charitable donations through the firm's registered charity, IMCF, and we continue to support our three firm charities. So in terms of our clients, we guide businesses of all sizes in lots of different sectors such as education, manufacturing, real estate, retail, leisure and hospitality, sports, banking and finance. And clearly sometimes those clients will need international support and we are able to do that through uh, being members of First Law International. And for those of you that aren't familiar with that organisation, it's a Brussels based global network with over 85 independent national law firms. So we also represent clients in 200 countries around the world and we do this by our own best friend network, which is a high quality trusted partnership. We also uh, have international outreach through our international serious injury team. So whatever our clients need, uh, you know, we, we have a way of servicing that. So again, in terms of our clients, we are a super brand and we are the strongest legal brand amongst business professionals in the UK 
And finally, on our clients, uh, we have helped over 1 million to date. We have an excellent rating on Trustpilot with our clients rating us at uh, 4.8 out of 5. So as I'm sure you can agree, we've got a lot to be proud of there. So next slide, please. So I'm just going to come on to touch on our client services areas. Um, and these are our legal and operations engines, and these are the areas where our trainee solicitors will sit in. And as you can see on screen there, there are seven separate areas. We have uh, 26 teams across these seven practice areas. And as I said earlier, we've got um, all sorts of uh, services that we can um, help a client with. So we are obviously always um, reviewing our approach to our training contracts and uh, we have recently reviewed how we move our trainees across those 26 teams and we're moving to an approach now that allows us to offer complementary seats across the training contract and we believe that doing that will will create uh, the strongest NQ solicitors and will give you that inter interconnecting knowledge and also be aligned to our client basis. So in terms of our training contracts that we offer now, we actually offer two types of training contracts. One where you'll get experience and do seats um, for services for individuals and the second being our services for businesses. So when uh, if you do want to apply, you will need to have a real um, deep think in terms of the sort of clients that you want to work for. And just to give you some insights into uh, the teams that service those clients. So within our individual um, clients, we've got areas uh, of family law. We've got our complex PI teams, which include medical negligence, serious injury and workplace illness. We have our, pri sorry, our private client services, including lifestyle and estate planning, wills trust and estate disputes, and lastly, court of protection and public law. In terms of our business areas, uh, we have commercial advisory and disputes, which incorporates co commercial employment, litigation, intellectual property and pensions. We also have property where we have teams in real estate, real estate disputes, construction and planning. And lastly, we have corporate and finance, which incorporates corporate banking and insolvency. It's important to note that in terms of those business areas, we service our clients from only certain offices. So in the north, um, those offices are in Leeds, Manchester and Sheffield. In the Midlands, it's Birmingham and in the south, it's London and Gatwick. So in terms of the training contract, you will undertake three seats and then you will do a repeat seat within the stream that you apply for. This will be over a two year period and at the end of that two years, you will really have a strong breadth of experience across uh, the stream that you've selected. The seats will be also related to your office, so it's really important that you take a look at our website to understand which teams are available in which office. Um, for some areas, we don't offer you know, all the different seats, so it's really key that you do that research to make sure you're applying to an area where you're going to get seats that you're interested in. Um, the seats will also be aligned to the department demand in your office and of course we'll review that on an ongoing basis um, so that uh, can mean that from time to time there are changes in terms of the seats that we can offer. The, as I say that the approach that we are taking now does allow you to to work in complementary seats and as I said earlier we do believe that that will increase your knowledge of our client base and um, as I mentioned there, when you make your application, you will need to indicate whether you're interested in that business side or individuals. In terms of the application you make, it's important to show that you've got an interest in the stream, but please don't lose sight of the fact that we are obviously a business and other areas will contribute into different departments. So please make sure that you're showing, uh, you know, your, your full understanding of, of the services that we offer. Next slide, please. So in terms of uh, the opportunities that we're recruiting for, so we welcome applications from all graduates and undergraduates, uh, those with degrees. Uh, we accept applications from those of you with LPCs and those of you without that. Uh, we are able to uh, offer 
places for 2025. Um, we're able to do that because we've actually incorporated the SQE into our training contract. There's lots of information as to our approach to SQE on our website, um, but uh, just to give you a flavour of that, we, we do that on an apprenticeship basis and that would work out that you would work four days in terms of working you know Mitchell's probably on a hybrid basis hybrid basis and then one day off where you will complete um, any studies towards your apprenticeship and your SQE. Uh, we do acknowledge it, that there are differences between those two routes and we are working with the business to ensure that we've got the right support systems in place to make sure whatever route you're doing you've got exactly what you need to succeed. Uh, we are strongly committed to diversity, so we don't focus on any specific universities in the recruitment process. And in fact, um, our current cohort of 84 solicitors studied at 40 different universities and 34% of, of those um, applicants were from non-Russell group universities. So as I say, uh, we are um, really committed to being diverse. We did have a question pre-submitted just uh, around the importance of legal work experience and whether that is required for our trainees. So again, uh, just to, to clarify, it's absolutely not a requirement. You don't need to have done any legal experience to secure a training contract with us. We are assessing you based on the strengths at the time of the uh, recruitment process and we're looking for those strengths that you can bring for our future solicitors um, and not necessarily the experience that you've had prior to that. We acknowledge that um, individuals may not have had that opportunity to have that legal work experience and we appreciate that lots of skills can be gained from other sorts of employment such as part-time jobs, volunteering hobbies or even you know having caring responsibilities. There's lots of transferable skills that are really valuable to us. So we have two routes for recruitment um, for which you can apply for a training contract at Irwin Mitchell and those are our legal work placement scheme or our training contract only. Uh, so please note uh, you can only make one application per year and we don't recruit on a rolling basis. A large number of our training contracts are offered to those who have completed the legal workplace this is a really great way to get an insight into the firm. So you can see it that you're interviewing us and that uh, obviously we're interviewing you. It's a two way process. Um, in terms of the placement, it is uh, a one week placement and you would be paid the national living wage for your time. The placement takes place in your chosen office uh, towards the end of June. And as I say, it gives you a great insight into the firm, the type of work we carry out and also gives you an insight into the people that you may be working with. The second route uh, for those of you who don't wish to do the placement or perhaps aren't able to do it, or perhaps you may already be working with the firm, is to apply for our training contract only application. Um, and for this route, uh, you will need to be successful through our recruitment process uh, again um, in order to receive a, a training contract offer. OK, so I've um, gone through a lot of information there, so I'm going to pass over to Alex just to give you some further information regarding our process. Great, thanks Amy. Hi everyone, I'm Alex, I'm one of the early careers managers and it's lovely to meet you all. So the first stage of the recruitment process involves a short online form where, you, where you'll register um, on our recruitment system. So you'll provide your basic personal information and your academic record. Uh, we'll also ask for information relating to SQE um, and if you're successful we'll work with you on the best pathway for you to qualify depending on what you've already covered in relation to SQE. Um, but one thing just to know is that we don't reimburse any fees retrospectively. Um, I think that was one of the pre-submitted questions so just wanted to cover that. So the information that you give on the online form is for reporting purposes only. Um, our recruitment process is blind throughout and assessors won't see any of your information. Following that online uh, form, um, we'll then invite you to complete a strength-based assessment. 
this will take about 90 minutes to two hours to complete and you'll have seven days to complete that. You can look at our website or YouTube channel to see our different uh, pro to see our recruitment process animation as well. So that takes you through the different stages just in case you need a reminder after this session. So next slide, please. So we work with a company called Catfinity to design a strength based assessment that measures the strengths that we're looking for in our trainee solicitors. So the assessment um, will test you in ways which are relevant to the role um, and provide you with a greater insight into the firm as well and the role that you've applied for. So why are we using strength based approach? Um, this is because when people are in roles that enable them to use the strengths, they um, they're happier, they're more engaged at work and tend to achieve higher levels of performance. Um, so these benefits extend beyond the role with research finding that using strength base uh, strengths regularly um, also increases your well-being, um, your confidence, your resilience and overall life satisfaction. So the strength based method is designed to understand both what energizes and motivates you as well as what you do well. This differs from the traditional competency based assessments. The strength based approach goes beyond those competencies to assess strengths, whereas the competency method focused more on what you can do or what you have done and actually nothing more than that. While the strength based approach combines can do with what you enjoy doing. So it measures levels of engagement and natural motivation, uh, which are just as important as capability in attaining that peak performance and creating a good fit between you and the role that you're applying for. So the strength based assessments uh, really find out what candidates love to do and, and what they do well. Uh, they're focused on making sure that people selected are the right people for the role. Um, so those um, who will enjoy their job, perform well and ultimately stay with the organisation, which is what we really want. It is really important to us that everyone has an equal chance to succeed. Um, the strength based approach explores what motivates and energises you rather than that placing that too much emphasis on what experience you might have in any certain area. So places everyone on that level playing field. So the online assessment will look similar to that of the picture on the screen. So the assessment starts with instructions and setup tips and you'll see a number of tiles on the screen. The tiles um, will present you with various situations that you might encounter as a trainee solicitor Erwin Mitchell um, and it will show a number of questions within that tile. There is a tutorial to help you navigate the assessment um, and a visible progress bar so you can gauge how much uh, more you have left to do. The assessment isn't timed, um, however, once you're invited to complete that online assessment, you do need to complete it within seven calendar days. Um, we recommend that you complete the assessment in one, sit one sitting, but that's not um, you know, you, if you want to set aside a couple of days to do it, that's absolutely fine. Or if you want to start in the morning, take a bit of a break and complete it in the afternoon, do whatever works best for you. The assessment seeks to understand how you behave in a range of situations and why. So um, we might ask you to order responses from the approach you would most to least likely take in a given scenario or those which sound most to least like you. Or you might have to indicate on a scale where you would most likely place your actions or views. So in terms of the preparation for the online assessment, the best thing you can do is not to over prepare. Um, our advice would be to reflect on your previous experiences and um, be truthful about what you really do and don't enjoy doing. Um, we really want to get to know you, the, the real authentic you, so don't try to anticipate what's being assessed or respond in a way that you think we want you to, um, as that might have a, a negative impact on how you come across and how you do in that assessment.
So when responding to the questions, respond on what feels most natural to you. Um, those questions are tapping into your strengths and there's not an obvious right or wrong thing to say. Um, just be honest in your responses and being honest will help you reflect on whether a training contract at Irwin Mitchell is right for you as well. So before undertaking that strength based assessment, um, there are a few simple things that you can do and think about that will help um, help you show the best of yourself. Um, so as you prepare for the strength based assessment, think about um, what your friends and family know, uh, know you for, how would they best describe you to a stranger? What do you truly enjoy doing and what are you like at your best? Um, what achievements are you proud of and how, how you got there, what you did to get there, how, how you achieved that? Um, think about activities both inside and outside of work that, that you don't particularly enjoy as well and, and why you don't enjoy them. And also, as you can see from the slide there, there will also be a critical thinking element to the assessment. Um, this part of the assessment is designed to measure your problem solving and decision making ability. Also in preparation, you can visit the Catfinity Preparation Hub, uh, which gives you um, a lot of guidance and also technical support to help you prepare for these types of assessments and feel comfortable and confident in approaching that part of the application process. So once you've completed that online assessment, um, you'll also receive a feedback report sharing your areas, um, your, your strength areas and tips for development. So everyone will receive this um, usually 24 hours after you submit your um, assessment. Um, it isn't an indication of whether you will be progressing to the next stage and um, everyone receives this feedback report, um, but you'll receive a separate communication indicating whether you'll be progressing to the next stage. So now I'm just going to hand over um, to our trainees who've completed the online assessment. Um, so Amy, if I can hand over to you first to just um, give any tips, any advice on, on completing that strength based um, assessment. Yeah, absolutely. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Amy. I'm a first seat uh, trainee in the real estate dispute team in Birmingham. And um, just in terms of the online assessment, I think probably the best advice I could give is, like Alex said, don't over prepare. I think it's easy um, you know, to try and think about it too much. It is a strength based assessment. Um, so I think the way I treated it was sort of almost almost like an not like an exam type thing. Um, so I'd make sure that I allocated the time and place to do the test. I'd make sure that I was in a comfortable you know setting. I wouldn't be disturbed that sort of thing just so I could perform at my best. Um, I think most of what I wanted to say, I think Alex has has covered already. I think just giving honest answers um, and don't put what you know what you think the answer is like um like alex said there is no right or wrong um answer it's down to each individual um and if you think you haven't done particularly well in one task it doesn't it you know don't don't let that um you know stop you going forward just take a breather um if you can and then and then and then just go again it's 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 down to each um down to each section um but one thing i did do uh, in preparation for mine, um, just things like um, it, with the critical thinking uh, section, um, it, it's just things like maybe get used to reading something and then and thinking what what does it mean. Um, so it could just be just read an article, any article, and summarize it in three points, um, and just see if you can find online um, online practice tests just to get yourself used to doing online online tests like like this one although just um just be aware that it won't be the exact same test it's just used it's just getting yourself used to um you know being in, in that online sort of environment instead of writing it down um but it's things like like alex said think what you're good at and what you're um and where you could potentially improve um and think of sort of tasks or like challenges that you could give yourself before before logging on and doing the test. Um, but absolutely do not panic. Um, just try and relax, be honest, um, give honest answers 
Um, and yeah, just just do your best. Um, try not to over try not to over prepare, but try and methodically think what can I practically do to help myself um, when you log on, so that it's not a complete complete shock when you do. Um, I think that's all I wanted to say. Um, so yeah, back to you, Alex. Great, thanks, Amy. No, some really helpful tips there. Um, if we could now um, go to hand over to Callum um, just to talk about his experience really of the online assessment and, and whether you had any previous work experience before completing it, if you think that was needed. Hi everybody, I'm Callum. I'm a first year um, trainee sitting in the corporate seat in Birmingham. Um, the strength based assessment, although you shouldn't over prepare, I, I found something that was really useful was practicing a few Watson Glaze tests just before them, just to get your head, not before the actual test, but just as some preparation for critical thinking. Um, this is not Watson Glazer, but it does help to get you into that critical thinking mindset. And um, it, it, yeah, so that is that would be one of the top tips uh, of, of advice, but don't over prepare, just consider that. Um, in terms of actual like work experience um, before participating in the um, the process. I'm probably the ideal person to ask who didn't have any work experience. So I went through the GDL route, so I didn't think I was going to go into law until sort of my well fourth year of university, basically. And I'd only really worked at um, part time jobs. So I worked at McDonald's for a bit. I worked at, worked at Holland and Barrett, um, but I used these um, in the process. So the McDonald's, even though it seems like a, just a a part-time job, develop organisational skills, thinking under pressure, um, and then holding the Barrett was great for client service, customer care. All of these are useful things to apply in in the legal sector. So definitely use any experience you have. Um, what you can also do is partaking any sort of volunteering you can at the moment. So I remember I did a Commonwealth Games volunteering. Um, I volunteered with my university. Um, and this really helped um, the process for me as it gave me something to talk about. Let me uh, transfer these skills into the legal sector. So definitely build on what experience you already have, regardless of what it is. Um, and then finally, just get really interested into something. Um, anything that links to the legal sector, it doesn't have to be a strong link, it can be a very tenuous link, but just get really interested in something. Um, so it gives you something to talk about. Um, I'm really interested into climate change and sort of like climate disclosures um, and also technology, a great area to be interested into and it really helps the process as well. So yeah, that's all from me. I'm going to pass back over to Alex. Great, thanks Callum. Some more great advice there as well. So if we can move to the next slide, please. So candidates that meet our benchmark um, will be invited to complete stage two of our process, which is a strength based video interview. So an email will be sent to you containing a link um, to enable you to complete the video interview. Um, you can do this in your own time, but it does have to be done um, within one sitting and within the one week um, time frame that you're given. So you'll not be given the opportunity to um, to re-record any answers. So it does have to be done in one sitting. So the advantage is that it is more realistic to life and means that you have an opportunity to really talk about your strengths in detail and also bring in um, that, those experiences that you've got as well. Um, but I suppose a disadvantage is that if you do mess up, you do have to think on your feet. Um, you have to think on your feet to rectify your answer. Um, but we do understand that you are really nervous. It, it is a nerve wracking process. So please don't worry if that does happen. Um, just try and get back on track and, and just complete that answer as well as you can. Um, and we have had people previously who have sort of messed up at the beginning of um, their answer and really brought it back on track and have been successful in getting through the process. So, so don't give up if that does happen. Um, just do your best to, you know, finish that answer and, and carry on. So when you begin your video interview, you'll have the opportunity to complete a technology check. So ensuring your camera is working properly and 
do remember to check your surroundings as well. So think about the view behind you, what can be seen. Um, and also ensure that you can be heard, heard clearly through your microphone and listen out for any background noise. Um, probably worth making sure that anyone who's in the house when you are recording your video interview, you know, knows what you're doing and, and doesn't burst in the room. We have had that before as well. So the technology check will be followed by a practice question, which isn't assessed. We would encourage you to make full use of that practice question to really get a feel of what to expect before starting on the assessed strength based questions. Um, it'll give you an idea of you know, how much time there is that you've got to 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 make your answer, to record your answer um, and just get you used to like speaking to the camera and just getting warmed up. So once you've completed the practice question, um, they'll, you'll then move on to the video interview itself where you will move on to the assessed questions. Um, you'll have a number of questions to complete and you have up to 30 seconds to prepare for each question and then two minutes to respond once the timer goes live. The questions will be strength based. Um, so like we said, unlike competency based interviews, um, which generally focus on your past experience. Strength based interviews are designed to assess your potential and what motivates you, um, whether you have experience in those areas or not. So in terms of preparation, um, you just prepare as if it was a normal interview. So make sure that you do your research on the firm and consider why you want a training contract with the firm. Uh, take some time to practice speaking in front of the camera for two minutes at a time um, perhaps do that to a family member or a friend or record yourself on your phone and watch it back um, and assess your answer. Think about those first impressions, um, like I said, check your surroundings and also dress quite as dress as if it was a formal interview. So wear what you'd you'd wear to a, a normal interview. Although with these interviews, we can only see the top half. So if you're comfy on the bottom half, it doesn't matter. Um, are you prepared? Make sure you have a glass of water to hand, uh, a notepad to make any notes of key points that you want to um, touch on in your answers as well. And make sure you answer the question. So don't, don't launch into an answer without really listening to what has been asked. And, and think about all parts of the question as well and make sure that you are answering all parts of it. Um, make sure you look at the camera as well, not, not sort of your screen um, and be engaging. Try to get your personality across, be yourself. I know it's difficult because it, it, it is nerve wracking like I've mentioned, but we want to get to know you, the real you, the authentic you. Um, and that's another thing that we sort of look for in that video interview. So I'll now go to um, another one of our trainees to just ask how they found the video interview. Um, so I'll hand over to Carolina. Hi everyone, I'm Carolina and I'm the first year trainee in the Birmingham office and currently I'm in the medical negligence seat. Um, so on the video interview, I think, as Alex said, it's important to do your research about the firm and really think about why you want to work there and what experiences you had in the past that would fit into the firm. And it doesn't have to be legal experience. It can be any kind of volunteering. It can be anything that you did at the university. Um, so just make sure that you make your answers personal and that they um, refer to the firm, but they also refer to you. Um, I think another thing that helped me personally was uh, writing down all of my skills on a piece of paper and then making sure I have an example of a situation where I demonstrated that skill. So when I say a question that would be, for example, tell us about a situation you work in a team, then you can just go back to that piece of paper and you don't panic, you know that you have an example of a situation already written there. You don't have to look into look in your head and just panic and think, when did you demonstrate that skill? Because you surely did, but it's stressful. So you want to have it all written down. But obviously you can't prepare for everything. There will be some questions you won't be able to predict. So just relax and take your time, take those 30 seconds to really think about what you would like to say. 
Um, I think another thing that really helped me was practicing before because it just um, it just felt quite unnatural for me to speak to um, to speak to a computer and know that there is no one on the other side. So uh, what I did is I went to a website. I think it was called Shortlist Me or something like that. But I think there are quite a few websites that offer that where you can uh, record yourself and just do a practice video interviews. There is even an option for just legal industry specific questions. So there you can just practice those interviews and you don't feel so awkward. You don't feel so unnatural when you're doing the actual interview. Um, but yeah, apart from that, I would just say just relax, take your time and don't panic. Like you're surely going to do well. You if you get to that stage, you went through the first one. So surely you you, you have you have the capability to, to do well in the video interview. So just take your time, relax and, and be confident. And I'm sure it's going to be to, to go well for you. Yeah, thank you. Now uh, going to hand over to back to Alex. Great, thanks Carolina. Um, so now I'm going to pass over to Amy, who's going to talk about the um, the next stage of the process. Brilliant, thanks Alex. So if you are successful at our video interval stage, we'll invite you to attend one of our assessment centres and that's where you'll be assessed by our associates, senior associates and partners from any location. Let me just move on. Thank you. Um, so just to give you a bit of a flavour in terms of um, what the what's included in our assessment centres. So perhaps a little bit obvious, but the assessment centre is a method of recruitment which incorporates a number of exercises. Uh, it's designed to allow you as candidates to demonstrate the key skills and attributes required for a particular position, in this case, obviously a trainee solicitor. And it's clear to um, be aware that we will assess you uh, solely on your performance in each stage of, of these exercises. Uh, so we are actually doing all our assessment centres virtually. Uh, we believe there's a number of benefits from doing this. Um, it gives you the opportunity to complete uh, your assessment centre from the comfort of your own home or space. And we believe that helps, uh, and as Alex mentioned, for you to bring forward uh, your most relaxed, authentic self. So that's, as I say, one of the reasons why we do that option. Uh, of course, there's no need to worry about your train being delayed or being getting lost uh, coming to one of our offices. Um, before you attend uh, one of our assessment centres, we also put a lot of effort into making sure that you are prepped for the day. So we'll give you lots of information as to what will happen on the day. Uh, we'll also arrange for a call to run through uh, how um, the assessment centre works virtually and to cover off any questions that you may have, as I say, to, to make you feel as confident as possible going into the day. Uh, of course, if there are any reasonable adjustments that you need to make us aware of, then we will work with you to make sure that we can accommodate those. Um, so the key really is to flag them as early on as possible. And as I say, we can work with you um, to make sure that this is not a barrier. Um, in terms of um, the blind screening approach, this also continues at our assessment centres. So just to reassure you, our assessors will have not seen any of your scores from the earlier stages of the process. They won't know which university you've been to or perhaps still attending and they also won't know if you if you made an application before. We are really committed to equal opportunities so again um, just to confirm that your socioeconomic background, ethnicity, gender, disability, age, sexual orientation, accent and as you can see I've got quite a strong regional accent it was not a barrier to me so that doesn't come into it at all. Um, we don't discriminate on religion, personal beliefs or any of your previous employment uh, and those will not play any part in the final decision as to whether we make you an offer. Um, so as we've mentioned a couple of times now, Erwin Mitch will really value for you and who you are and what you can bring. Um, and so on that point, we really encourage you to bring your authentic self through to the assessment centre. And as I say, you will only be assessed based on your performance in each of those exercises. 
The assessment centre will also be a great opportunity to meet our current trainees and for you to ask any questions that you may want to ask. Um, if you are invited to assessment centre, I would recommend that you take the opportunity as um, it's a really good um, chance to, to get that, those questions covered. Um, so at the assessment centre, uh, you'll complete a number of exercises, including an interview uh, and our other exercises um, may include uh, a team exercise or perhaps uh, an exercise where we'll ask you to prepare written communication. So just to move on to some um, hints and tips in terms of what we recommend that you do. Um, so again like the video interview it, it's really key for you to listen to the instructions uh, also make sure that you're listening to other people's ideas but also contributing yourself but allowing others the time to contribute equally um, read any instructions in full um, make sure that you're considering the audience who you're presenting to and and how uh, you, your communication style is um, don't forget to check any work before you submit that from consideration. In terms of the interviews, our assessors will be really wanting to know uh, more about you, your motivation for applying to Erin Mitchell. They'll be um, asking questions to establish where your strengths lie and how you would approach any given situation. Um, it's really key that you um, keep a track of time um, these things can go very quickly and sometimes we'll get uh, situations where um, a candidate will get stuck on a particular section and use a lot of the time. It's it's clear you must um, appreciate that we can only score you on, on the information that you give. So if you don't complete a section, you'll be missing out on, on marks for that. So as I say, it's really key, uh, key to keep a, a, a clear um, grasp of, of the time. Um, so, of course, for all exercises, we recommend that you do uh, lots of research on Erwin uh, Mitchell. And the great thing is you're here today and you're getting lots of information already. Uh, but it's also key to make sure that you're doing some wider reading around the legal sector just to make sure you are, you know, you are commercially aware as possible. In terms of what you can do on the day, um, so again, similar to what we advise on the video interview, but make sure that you have a quiet room where you can undertake the assessments without any distractions. Uh, make sure that you've prepped any questions that you may want to have ask Sorry, in advance. Um, ensure that you've got writing materials and refreshments to hand. Um, the um, assessment centres can be very draining, so anything you can do to keep your energy um, levels high, uh, the better. Um, it's really key again not to overanalyze your performance in um, in a previous exercise. You may uh, do your interview and you think, oh gosh, that, that went terribly. And sometimes that can then, um, if you if you take that thought process into the next exercise, it can really then affect um, the, the next part. So after each exercise, it's it's really good just to take a few moments to process that put any thoughts to one side and come into the next exercise with a, a real um, positive frame of mind. I've already touched on this, but remember again that we can only mark you and give you credit for the contributions that, that you make. So please make sure um, that you are uh, contributing um, to any exercise you're completing. All of our exercises will require you to work at speed and that is done to reflect um, how things would be um, if you were a trainee solicitor. So again, planning your time it is real, really key. Uh, last but not least, and we've said this about three or four times already, it's really key to relax and enjoy yourself. I know it's easier said than done when you're under pressure in an assessment centre, but as I say, we're really interested in you and we know uh, the more relaxed you can be, the better. Uh, in terms of outcomes, we will inform candidates who uh, attend the assessment centres of their outcome and you'll also get an opportunity if you are unsuccessful to receive some feedback from our early careers team and I'd strongly recommend uh, that anybody uh, does that. I know it can be difficult uh, receiving that feedback but it's really important and, and can be really helpful if you do, then do choose to um, reapply.
So that's lots of information around the AC. So I'm going to come out to our panel now uh, just to get uh, some of their insights around their experiences. So I'm going to come to Aaron first. Uh, so Aaron, if you wouldn't mind just introducing yourself and talking us through how you prepared for the assessment day. Yeah, thanks, Amy. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm a first year trainee and I'm in the employment seat in the Birmingham office. Um, so if you are successful to get an assessment day, um, it's it's fantastic, first of all, because you've already built that that relationship with the firm and you've gone past that virtual interview. So you know already what the culture and the values are of the firm. So you've already built a fantastic um, a bridge to, to come over into the assessment day. I think Amy's alluded to some fantastic points there. Um, and for me, it's just about being yourself on the day because this is just a, a great opportunity um, and you get three different chances um, to just express yourself in different ways. Um, so really a, a skill that I'd probably elaborate to for, for each exercise is for the group exercise, I probably think 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 about your personality a little bit. So if you are one who is more of a contributor and, and, and likes to have more of a vocal standpoint when 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 informed in a discussion, I probably think to yourself, how can I collaborate a little bit better and make sure that it's teamwork and exercise? Um, because that, that's what the task is. It's collaborating to reach a goal um, but between you and, and the others who, who are going to be also on the group exercise. And if on the other side of the fence, you're one who's maybe not too vocal and likes to sit back a little bit, maybe think to yourself about how you can demonstrate more contribution to collaborate a little bit better. Um, so perhaps think about that with the group exercise. Um, in relation to the written task, um, I definitely think about what 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 commercial awareness you can bring to the table. So what what what's occurring at the minute? Because that's likely to be the topic of the written exercise. That that's likely to be what the focus is. So it will be on a theme. Um, so definitely have a think about what's what's been highlighted in the media or what what commercial awareness is, is going on um, and then bring it back to Owen Mitchell all the time because there'll be different ways where what you're writing about can be of relevance to Owen Mitchell because that is obviously where you want to be um, so try and relate your written exercise to that um, and just finally in relation to the interview I'll just come back to what I said at the start just it's important to be yourself and use that use that sort of that star technique as well that situation task achievement and result um, in, in, in answering the questions because that will give you sort of a good foundation um, to express your answer a lot better. Brilliant. Thanks, Aaron. Just a, a follow up question, just to sort of focus in on um, the group exercise. So um, when you undertook your assessment centre, I believe you would have got a group exercise which asked you to examine the effects of COVID and how that affected football fall in um, certain towns and cities. Um, we gave you uh, obviously a timeline to um, prepare your answer. So would you be able to just talk us through uh, how that felt and, and, and what you did in terms of preparation for that? Yeah, absolutely. So it was nice at the start because it gave you a few minutes to actually um, learn about what learn about the COVID task and, and read through some documents and actually get your own independent understanding before you start to collaborate in the group. So that was nice to actually sort of prepare um, for what the discussion is going to be about. And then you actually have a chance to discuss with um, your, your teammate um, and find a collaborative response together. Um, so focus will be um, upon advantages of perhaps um, where the footfall will lie in relation to Owen Mitchell or small businesses and there will be sort of a chance for the um, your teammate to probably give a disadvantage viewpoint and then you'll form some middle ground so you'll both take each other's ideas and then you'll come to an, an outcome which is relevant to the business um, and then I think um, towards the end, I think the assessor will, will will sort of independently ask again one what one question each, and I think that we sort of like took 
each other's responses then um, and form sort of a general opinion. Um, so it's nice. It's just sort of like bringing each other's Bring, bring, bringing each other's sort of opinions together rather than your own um, and finding a decision that's just best for the task and the business. Brilliant. Thanks, Aaron. That's really, really helpful. So I'm now going to come to um, Chani, just one of our assessors. Um, so the question that we've got for you as one of our assessors, you could be assessing candidates from any office, uh, from anybody that has interest in any of our teams. So uh, if you don't mind introducing yourself and explaining um, when you're interviewing, what do you like to see from candidates? Sure, thanks, um, Amy. So. Good evening all, my name's Chani Daliwal. I'm a partner in the Serious Injury team um, in London. I've been with the firm now for nearly 19 years, having joined after finishing law school. So um, I was a trainee here many years ago and I've been on both sides of um, this presentation. Now, I remember when I joined, um, somebody said that um, today's trainee is tomorrow's partner. Uh, and in my view, that holds true Today, we invest a huge amount of time and energy um, in our training programme. We have a, a fabulous early careers team and, you know, dedicated partners and lawyers wanting to give you um, the very best experience um, during your, your training contract. But I think it's important to recognise and note that we're not just focused on that two year programme. Um, what we want is to attract and retain the talent that's going to lead our business in the future. So um, moving on to the assessment day and, and the interview, um, I, I know you know some tips have been shared, but I, I think it's important to emphasise that um, you must prepare. Um, preparation is key. If you've done everything you can to prepare for the assessment centre and indeed the interview, that will give you some confidence. Um, you know, you need to have a really good understanding of our business. So just don't turn up thinking you can you know, sort of get through it because you'll be found out. Um, and the other thing I wanted to say was nerves can get the better of us. Um, you know, we're all human and we understand um, how much this means to you all. Um, and you, of course, you're going to be um, nervous, but it's important to control and manage um, your nerves. Um, our approach um, isn't to um, be aggressive or intimidating or to ask you trick questions. You know, we want to get the best out of you so we can make a proper assessment of the candidates who've attended the assessment centre. Uh, and again, remember, you know, you've been shortlisted from thousands of applications and, you know, that that ought to give you some confidence because we've clearly seen something that we we like. We're not testing you on your your technical knowledge um, at the interview. Um, there's going to be a number of competency based questions. We're going to take you through scenarios that trainees are likely to face during their, their training contract. But, you know, we're also looking at your commercial awareness. So what impresses me? I mean, the word authentic has been used quite a few times. Um, I do want to see somebody who's authentic, uh, enthusiastic, uh, and has really thought um, about the question that we've put to them. Um, I'm looking at your ability to articulate your, your answer concisely. Um, I, I want to have an engaging conversation, which leaves me wanting to ask you more. So, you know, your, your experience, and I'm not just talking about your legal experience, um, that will no doubt shape the answers that you provide. And I think the more you've been exposed to, the, the better position you're going to be in um, at, at the interview. Um, think about the questions you want to, to ask us. You know, you're going to have an opportunity to ask the assessors, um, you know, questions. So, uh, and don't just ask to sort of the standard question as to, you know, where do you see yourself or the firm in three years time? I mean, if you have a look at our strategy, that will give you a good indication as to, you know, what the answer is to your question. Think about what's happening in the legal sector. What's driving change? You know, are there any threats to our business? If so, um, what are they and why? You know, what can be done? Be prepared to be challenged um, 
and 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 think through the answers that you're going to 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 provide. And the last thing I wanted to say was, look, the career in law is a roller coaster. You know, there are going to be many highs, but there are also some lows. And you know, securing a training contract feels like you know the world at the time. Um, and I understand it because I remember the process all too well. Um, but remember, the most important thing is to secure the right training contract. You know, it will shape your career. And um, you know, you may get some knockbacks um, on the way, but that's okay. You know, it helps us build resilience. Um, but don't let it bring you down. And and you know, certainly don't give up. You know, you'll get there um, if you put in the hard work. Um, and stay positive. You know, have you know, come to the assessment centre with a positive mindset. But there is a fine balance between, you know, confidence and perhaps, um, you know, giving the impression of being um, arrogant. So just just bear that in mind. So those are my tips um, for the day or the the interview. Um, back to you, Amy. Brilliant. Thanks, Chani. Some really great advice there. Voice of reason as ever. Um, so, Jason, I'm going to come to you next. Um, so, again, if you wouldn't mind just introducing yourself and maybe if you just talk through um, some of the things that sometimes lets candidates down, um, it, especially in the group exercise. Yeah, of course, Amy, and um, thanks so much. Good evening, um, everybody. So, um, so my name's Jason, Jason Newell. I'm a, I'm a partner in the regulatory team, um, ordinarily based from the Sheffield office, although I'm squatting in Birmingham um, at the minute. The nature of our work, we're, we're a little all, all over the place with, with the nature of the clients that we represent. So um, I did my training very much at, at a different firm to, to a much of a small high street firm, so very different to, to what we're discussing tonight. But um, I've been at IM now for, for five and a half years. Um, I've been involved in in the assessment centres over the last um, number of years, and and have dealt with with the interviews, with the written exercises, and also with the group exercises. Now, the group exercise um, specifically it says, as it is on the tin, um, it's a task for um, a group to work upon, um, to discuss a topic or a scenario, um, and ultimately to come up with with some conclusion or some decisions from the from the discussion um, that you have within your group. Um, the, the nature of the exercise that it is obviously allows candidates um, to demonstrate a, a number of skills and um, specifically to, to look Amy, at, at what perhaps um, doesn't go well or, or is not particularly great for, from an assessor to look at. Um, with it being a group exercise, there's a, a number of people involved and um, it can be very easy for somebody to think that they have to be the loudest um, in the group and be a little overpowering. Um, in the discussions that they have, which which isn't necessarily always um, a great attribute to have. Um, on the flip side, you don't want to be particularly quiet. You want to to, to have a voice. You need to be engaged in the discussion that the, that the group is having. So I suppose it's striking that balance between not wanting to be too quiet, but neither not want to be, wanting to be too loud um, or overpowering um, in respect of that. But be involved. Um, it's very easy not to be um, in a group discussion to, to, to have your say and, and to have your voice. Um, I suppose other other things that might might let candidates down. Um, running out of time is obviously a, a very easy one. Um, you know, it's important perhaps that somebody does take charge on uh, allocating um, how much time you've got to discuss the matter so that when the, the time comes to present it, you've, you've been able to discuss everything um, and, and come up with, with some sort of conclusion. And I guess that feeds into the next um, perhaps point that, that is often or sometimes a weakness for people, and that's not reaching a decision or, or not reaching a conclusion um, in the task that's been set. The task is one that deliberately doesn't have particularly a right or a wrong answer. Um, it, it's there for candidates to uh, allow, be allowed to have um, an opinion or an, an opportunity to express your views um, in relation to to the scenario or the topic that that, that you've got. Um, because of that, it's important that that you do come up with, with with some sort of decision. As I say, it's not necessarily right or wrong. But be able to back it up with some reasons um, as to why you've you've come up with with nailing your colours to the mast with with some sort of decision in relation to it. again um, a failing that that is sometimes seen in candidates is 
is is as well as not receiving or not reaching um, a decision, uh, not being able to back up why you have reached your decision. So, um, to summarise all of that, I guess it's it, it's it's be involved in relation to the discussion, striking that balance between not being too loud and overpowering, but but not being the, the quiet mouse either, and and be involved in the discussion, um, listen to other people's um, uh, suggestions or or ideas. Uh, rather than dismissing them and perhaps reasoning with with, with people in respect of that. Um, use the time and, and be careful of that and don't run out of time. Um, and, and then do come up with a conclusion um, or a decision in relation to it and be able to, to back it up and and, um, uh, and expect to be asked questions that will test a little um, why you've come up with, with, with that conclusion. But as I say, there's there's no right or wrong answer in relation to it. So so don't be afraid to, to come up with, with, with reasons for, for, for why you've picked um, your conclusion in respect of it. So I hope I hope that's useful um, and answers the, the point you make in respect of that. Super useful. Thanks, Jason. That's um, some really great insights there. So um, I'm now going to come to Jenny. Uh, so again, Jenny, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself and uh, the question that we've got for you is to uh, could you explain how you can tell that a candidate has really done their homework and prepared well? Hi, yeah, so I'm um, Jenny Arrowsmith. I'm an employment partner. I've been at Mary Mitchell for um, nearly 10 years. I've um, been practicing for a long time um, before that as well. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, great comments from my colleagues, really. Jason, I share exactly what you were going to say in terms of um, that, that approach and, and, and gender too. So, I think in terms of Preparing, we've covered that off okay, but in terms of not preparing well enough, um, it's about research really. So not asking the daft questions that you can see from the website. Um, a big thing for me is understanding what we do as a business. Now that's not just about providing good technical legal advice, and that's really where we're looking for in terms of then drawing out those additional skills from you as potential future lawyers. It's 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 much more than just the legal advice it's about how we do it. it's about how we build relationships with our clients and each other so that we can get that collaboration we can share work between us we can win new work we can do a great job for our clients because we're understanding what our clients needs are so that comes down to the kind of things we're trying to draw out the task so um what what are the issues our clients are facing and that's something that you can prepare for in advance you can look in the market and think about the legal um, market as it stands but also the economic market what are the what you know for, certainly from a business perspective what are the issues that our clients are going to be facing and where are the legal issues going to be arising out of that because that's what our clients are going to be coming to us with um, our job isn't just to provide legal advice to them on those scenarios we've got to really immerse ourselves in understanding what the client problem is because it's only when we understand the client need motivations problem can we provide the solution and that solution obviously is legal advice but it's also how we deliver that advice so we need to deliver it in a timely fashion we need to understand their deadlines we need to listen to them really carefully about what their needs and pressures are and their priorities and then we need to collaborate to make sure that we're meeting that need so all of those softer skills together with the legal advice is what makes a great job so I think for me, preparing can be, yes, we're not expecting you to be um, technical experts right now. We're looking for that potential, but what, what you can do is demonstrate that you have prepared by um, thinking about those kind of things, being very aware of the market um, and being open to ask questions as well, be interested. Um, yeah, I think, I think that covers it. That's, that's from a business perspective, particularly because that's my, my leaning in terms of clients. Brilliant. Thanks so much, Jenny. Uh, some brilliant insights there. So um, just coming back now on to uh, the later stages of our assessment centres and um, stage four. So um, if you have applied for a legal work placement and you're successful at assessment centre, you will be invited to join us on the one week work on the one week placement. Um, in terms of the dates when that's happening, we have earmarked uh, week commencing the 17th of June and week commencing the 24th of June. Um, the legal work placement is in person and you will complete the final assessment at the end of that placement. 
If you have chosen the training contract only option, uh, you will also complete that final assessment, which again will be in person at the office you applied for. So again, going to come to the panel again uh, just to get some tips uh, in relation to uh, the legal work placement. So Jenny, uh, I'm back with you. Um, so if you wouldn't mind just talking us through what impresses you on the placement and if you have any final tips, then then please um, let us know what they are. Um, things that impress me, really we just need to get to know you and again, showing that sign of real interest in what we do. So. Um, I'm not impressed if somebody um, hides away and is very, um, very much waiting for tasks to be given to them. You know, ask ask for as much experience as you possibly can get in that week. Um, talk to us, ask us questions, try and understand what we do, what kind of work we do, and be really inquisitive. That shows a real passion and um, for, for 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 the job. Um, Listen really carefully. I remember um, one person I was talking about a really complicated task and they were sat in front of me and didn't pick up their pen at any point. And I just knew that they weren't going to be able to do the job that I was asking them to do. So um, if people are speaking to you quickly, slow them down, take your time, make sure that you're showing that you're listening and make sure that you are listening so that you can do the very best you can um, in that particular task. And if you say you're going to do something by a certain time, do it by then. And if you don't think you'll be able to, um, just talk to us because you might be getting demanding um, you know, different tasks from different people during the course of the week because everybody wants you to succeed, succeed. So everyone will be trying to give you every opportunity. But that's that's life as a lawyer to a large extent. It's demonstrating that ability to prioritise. Um, so that kind of things really, I think just just throw yourself into it and get the most out of it as much as you possibly can so that we can really see your strengths. But I, I go back to a comment that was made earlier. Just be yourself, you know, get to know people and you'll be more relaxed that way. If you're more relaxed, you'll show your strengths um, and you'll show your true potential, which is what we're wanting to see. Brilliant. Thanks, Jenny. Uh, Chani, coming back to you now. So again, um, based on the legal work at placement, um, what should a candidate not do on the placement? And again, uh, if you've got any final tips, then then please let us know. OK, sure. Um, well, look, this is a, a, a the best opportunity for you to get an insight into um, our business. I mean, I may be biased when I say, you know, Urban Mitchell's a fantastic place to work. Um, the, the placement enables you to make up your own mind. So, you know, it is certainly a two way process, um, this, this assessment, um, but make sure you make your time count. So, you know, come prepared, you know, be prepared to 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 engage. I think that's really, really important. I mean, I'm asked to um, to tell you what not to do um, during the placement. Um, to, to be honest, I don't really have much to say on that because a lot of it is common sense. Um, you know, things like don't arrive late. I mean, discipline in our profession is is really important. Um, and don't spend time using your phone um, during the, the sort of the, the working um, hours. Um, but this is fairly obvious stuff and I'm sure nobody um, will be doing that anyway. Um, I mean, in terms of what we're looking for, as I said, you know, I want to have really good engagement. Somebody who's genuinely intrigued by our work and wants to find out more and it may be an area that they haven't actually considered um, and isn't on the top of their list in terms of the seats that they want to do but somebody who's who's kept an open mind and you know wants to know more um about you know what our day looks like you know what are the the issues on a particular case you know how's it going to um you know how's this going to pan out over the next few years um you know, you're going to be given various tasks during the week and, and we'll assess them and we'll provide you feedback. Take the feedback on board, you know, ask relevant questions. But I also think it's an opportunity to get to know the business, you know, ask our colleagues about their experience, you know, explore um, our DNI networks. You know, what do we do in terms of volunteering, our community work, um, but also um, get to know um, our culture. So there's a lot to pack in. Um, during that that week, but it is a, an enjoyable um, and interesting week, and you know I, I'm sure you'll you'll take lots um, lots out of it. So that's all I've got to say.
Thanks, Chani. That's really helpful. Um, so just going to come uh, now to our trainees to get their view on the legal work placement. So, Amy, uh, I'm going to come to you first. If you could just uh, let us know how you found the legal work placement. Yeah, so uh, I did my placement last year um, and it was a really great week. Um, as it's already been said, it's a great insight and an opportunity to to come into Urban Mitchell and learn about the firm. Um, you know, it's you've done, I think, first things first, if you get to the legal work placement stage, you need to give yourself a massive pat on the back because, you know, you've got through the application form, you've done the online assessment, you've done the video interview, the assessment centre, and now you're here. Um, and it, it is brilliant. It's I think I'm not sure if it's structured differently, but last year it was a hybrid approach, and we were we went into a team, a different team per year uh, per day. So it was a great um, a great opportunity to experience different areas and um, and just you know get a real a broad experience of what um, of what Over Mitchell um, do. Um, but I think yeah, my my big top tip, and I think it's already been said, is just ask questions, talk to anyone and everyone that you can. Um, in in your teams, you'll be allocated um, a supervisor and a uh, like a, a mentor, and it's usually the trainee or or a paralegal or a um, a junior solicitor in the team. Ask ask them questions, any anything and everything. Um, it's your one chance to learn as much as you can before your final assessment. Um, so just absolutely anything at all. It could be about the work, it could be about, um, you know, ex extracurricular things that, that we get involved in, what it's like um, in in your cities. I know in, I'm in Birmingham and there's loads of different um, like networks and groups that uh, that you can join, ask about that, really try and understand what it would be like to be um, to be an NQ, to be a trainee in, in that office. Um, but um, yeah, I think that's that that was my my top tip I think that's and that's what I did just speak in every single day just just message um message someone on on team say hi I'm you know I'm I'm a legal work placement student have you got 10 minutes for a coffee I've just got, I've got a couple of questions for you would really appreciate it that that's that's all it that you know that's all you need to do and people will want to help you um and will want to talk to you um and if if you've got an, a specific interest in um, in an area, say it's corporate, for example, but um, but you're not allocated to the corporate team, still go out of your way to try and um, talk to someone in the corporate team. Um, it that it really does make the difference, and it helps when when you come to your final um, assessment at the end of the week. It it does really it helps, and it sort of puts you at ease a bit because you've been there for the whole week. Um, and you've and you've got a really good insight into Urban Mitchell. I think if you get the opportunity and and if you can do it, um, do the do, try and try and do the legal work placement because um, it is a brilliant opportunity and, and I really enjoyed it. It's, it's a great week. I think that's all I had to say. Brilliant. Thanks, Amy. Some really useful insights there. And uh, just to to confirm, the legal workplace is, is in person this year. Um, so, Carolina, just coming to you along the same lines and um, talking about the legal work placement, but can you let us know in terms of what you might have learned from, from your week? Hi, I'll, I think Amy pretty much covered it all. Um, so in terms of the legal placement, um, I think, it, yeah, it was just a great opportunity to uh, learn more about the firm and I think what I found really useful is to make sure you prepare yourself for every session so we had a lot of sessions with different members from the firm uh, where we talked about different departments and different diversity networks for example so maybe do a little bit of research just go on the website and see um, if there is anything that interests you about it or any questions that you might have so at the end of the session you make yourself known you ask a question and you show that you do have interest in the firm um, in terms of what I've learned I think I've learned about variety of teams there are in the firm because with the way my vacation scheme was structured they also did it last year um it was um that we each day we 
completed a task from a different team. So we completed a task for a medical negligence team, real estate team. I think there was a corporate task as well um, and also a private client task. So I think that was just a great opportunity to see uh, the variety of work you might be able to engage in in Erwin Mitchell uh, and the different tasks that you might be engaging in as a trainee. Um, but apart from that, I've just learned more about the culture and the values of the firm by just talking to people. As Amy said, it's great to just uh, get in touch with people from departments where you might be interested in working in and just ask them all the questions you have. So you learn more about the firm from 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 the team members and you learn more about the firm from people who, who work there and just about their everyday lives in the firm and their everyday tasks. Uh, so yeah, as, as Amy said, I would definitely recommend completing a legal work placement if you have an opportunity to do so. Um, because I think um, you just after that week, um, you just get just a really good insight into the firm and you will be definitely better prepared for the final interview. Um, I think that's all from me. So back to you, Amy. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks, Carolina. Again, some really interesting points there. Um, so just a couple bits more of information on that stage. So uh, the final assessment takes place in the per sorry in person in the office that you've applied for, and uh, that assessment will be undertaken by our early careers regional representatives. And they are partners, senior associates who support the early career strategy in their local office and also uh, are a tower of strength to our trainees and apprentices uh, supply, uh, supply, supplying pastoral support uh, in their offices. So in terms of that final assessment, uh, in terms of the recommendations, it's very similar to what I've said about the assessment centres. So uh, make sure you're doing your research, make sure you take your time and be clear uh, but again and we've said it so many times today uh, please relax and, and be yourself um, so that stage of the assessment will take place uh, across uh, June and that would be ahead of us making uh, the final training contracts in July so I'm going to come to Jason and Jason is actually one of our early careers regional representatives for our Sheffield office. So uh, Jason, you conduct the final stage interviews. Um, so could you talk us through what impresses you at this stage and uh, what makes an excellent answer rather than uh, just OK? Yep, yep, sure. So the obviously the, the final assessment is the, the final hurdle. Um, essentially for, for our candidates. It, it follows the uh, hopefully enjoyable uh, week of legal work placement. So by this stage, um, you, you've been through a number of assessments and you should already know a great deal um, about the firm. But I suppose what, what impresses me um, and makes those particular candidates um, stand out from, from others that we interview is, is those that perhaps are able to demonstrate um, a clear motivation as to why they want to become a solicitor um or perhaps more importantly why they want to to qualify um, and become a solicitor at Irwin Mitchell um there's obviously a a lot of choice uh, firms out there but but as Chani touched upon a little earlier in, in one of his answers we're looking as an investment for prospective trainees and the, the future of the firm looking for those solicitors that will will fit with with Irwin Mitchell with our brand um with, with our culture so really those candidates that, that are able to to give examples as to to why Irwin Mitchell rather than not Joe Bloggs other firm um, in the same city um, able to demonstrate <clears throat> perhaps that they've done some research um, on the firm looking maybe at the specific office at why they've picked that office um, whether it's because of the the areas of work that that office does and and that they might have a particular interest in in, in doing a seat or qualifying in those um, those areas whether it's the extracurricular activities um, that, that might be undertaken um, with, within that office. So really answers that are, are specific to, to Irwin Mitchell and a, and a training contact, contract with us um, rather than generic answers that, that could easily be trotted out for a number of interviews with, with a number of other firms. So those that really stand out are those that, that can genuinely demonstrate why they've picked IM um, over, uh, over other, other, other firms. Um, perhaps those that are really engaging um, in, in the interview, it's understandable that you're going to be nervous, but be engaging, be interactive and interested in, in the answers that you're giving 
um, to me um, or the other people that, that are interviewing you to be passionate about why you want to go into law room. And again, come back to specifically why I am passionate about you, why you've picked us um, over other, other, over other firms. If you've done obviously the legal work placement, um, what have you learned about I am that, that's made you um, confirm that you've picked the right the right firm to, to do your training contract with? Um, what have you used your week um, to, to do to find out more about the firm or about the, the office or the, the, the teams or colleagues? So again, coming back to, to answers that have been given to you about what to do or what not to do on the work placements, be engaged in relation to that so that you can bring examples um, into, into the final assessment interview. Um, obvious goes without saying, I hope, but make sure you answer the question or the, the, the questions that are you, you are asked um, during the interview. And use, if you can, examples, um, if you've got legal work experience at IM or other firms to be able to bring in some experience um, or as you've heard from 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 uh, the panel earlier some people might not have done any work experience at a legal firm but but life experiences or experiences from a part-time job that you might have had that you can fit into a scenario um, that, that, that is part of the questions that, that are given to you I, I guess often a difficult area that perhaps candidates struggle to to, to to give answers in relation to is is a business affinity it's a commerciality um, so do your research on the firm, do your, your research on, on what's happening in the, in the market, in the legal market, in the general um, happenings of, uh, of the country um, so that you can perhaps feed that into to some answers um, broader than just the, the, the delivery of, of, of legal services to, um, to our clients. And then I suppose lastly, at the end of the interview, um, candidates are given a chance to to ask any questions of those that are interviewing and again that demonstrates um, perhaps a, um, a passion and an interest in, in IM to wanting to find out more from, from people um, that have been at the firm for a number of years um, and, and not just why are Mitchell and why have you stayed there for, for so long um, but you know try and be a little bit more um, thoughtful in, in, in the questions that you're giving and again it's demonstrating that engagement and the, and the, the motivation and passion. So again I hope that's it gives um, some food for thought as to, to really what we're looking for for those candidates to to stand out from from others that are interviewing as to, to, to why we should offer um, training contracts at the at that final assessment hurdle. Definitely. Thanks, Jason. Some great advice there. Um, so just to get a, a trainee view on that, uh, we're going to come to Aaron. Um, so do you have any final tips for candidates at this uh, last stage of the process? Yeah, so I'd firstly say, uh, Amy, that this will be probably the first time for um, a lot of people that they're actually meeting an Owen Mitchell uh, employee for the first time in person. Um, so it be a confidence factor, which there may be needed here. Um, like the formalities like shaking a hand, um, looking, eye contact, um, just important factors like that which you will not necessarily have throughout the virtual video interview or the virtual assessment center you can sort of perhaps get away with those formalities where as meeting someone in person you do need to make sure those things are done right um and i think jason's alluded to like some fantastic points there because i remember answering some of the questions um at that final assessment day um as if I was a trainee already. Um, I was literally answering the like finishing sentences off like and I would be doing that as a trainee solicitor and doing that in your department for this reason or this reason or another. So the assessors were sort of thinking to themselves, why would I not employ that person if he's already doing the work of a trainee solicitor anywhere? Um, so for me it was just having sort of that that element to evidence how you can be a successful trading sister at Owen Mitchell and the, the culture and the values that um, Charlie spoke about really important understanding sort of the charities that we work with our diversity networks the culture and values they're so important because if you can bring those into certain answers and then sort of relate that to how to your personal side so how you've been experiencing perhaps comparable things how you've been doing charity work or some values that 
are in your personal life. That's a massive advantage to someone who may be not able to evidence that. So yeah, definitely understanding the firm and being able to evidence that and um, just sort of those formalities as well, um, making sure that you have that confidence element with someone in person. Brilliant. Thanks, Aaron. Again, really, really helpful. Um, so we're at the latter stages now. I'm going to pass over to Alex, who's going to run through some key information for uh, if you want to apply. Thanks, Amy. So hopefully the session's provided you with an insight into our recruitment process and what to expect when applying for a training contract at Irwin Mitchell. Um, so just there on the slide is the key date. So applications are now open and they close on the 2nd of January for all applicants. Um, there is also an opportunity to, for you to find out more about the firm as well at our other virtual events that are taking place over the next few weeks. Um, or alternative, you can view our website where there's more information there. So we have events coming up that will give you an insight into um, our clients, our culture, uh, more about our trainees, hear more from our trainees about like day to day. Um, and there's also a Q&A session as well with our early careers team. So a few events coming up, uh, which I'd definitely recommend you attending if you are intending on applying, uh, just to, to get, as we've mentioned, you know, that, that real insight into Owen Mitchell. So we have tried to answer um, the majority of questions we've received um, about the recruitment process um, through the presentation or we've gone back to a number of um, questions in the chat as well. Um, and I'm just conscious that we are running running out of time. Um, so if there are any questions um, that we haven't been able to go back to or you've got any specific questions, um, then you can always email the early careers email address and we can come back to you. That's early careers at owenmitchell.com. Um, and also there's also the sessions, you know, that I've just mentioned where you can get more of an insight as well um, and an opportunity to ask questions. So um, I'll just finish on my final tip for you all, and I think it's come out through the presentation. Um, be your best self, not someone you think you should be. We just really want to get to know you throughout the process um, and for you to shine and, and show us who you really are and really demonstrate those strengths. So, I mean, I don't know if we've got any outstanding outstanding questions that we can quickly run through. We've got a couple of minutes. Um, so we do have a question, if I can find it, just in relation to uh, dyslexia and whether that's a disadvantage and whether it's something that should be de declared uh, in the application. Uh, so as somebody that's got dyslexia, I would uh, encourage you if you are comfortable to share that with us. Uh, obviously, we uh, have a reasonable adjustments policy and uh, we have our early careers team who will support you through that. We also have uh, HR advisors who you can also speak to about that in terms of any equipment, any things that we can help you with. Um, so I would say um, in terms of disclosing that if you are comfortable, uh, then then yes, uh, disclose it and it certainly uh, wouldn't put you at any disadvantage. Um, so I think all the other questions, Alex, are more around um, specific things around the application process, which I think we've covered. So unless, Alex, there's anything that you can see that we want to answer, uh, I think we might be OK to wrap up. Yeah, the only question that we've been asked quite a lot is at what points um, the different assessments take place. Um, and that, that does depend on actually when you submit that initial application. So once you submit that initial application, that's when the ball starts rolling. So um, you should receive the online assessment within 48 hours of submitting that initial form. Um, you'll have seven days to complete that. And then if you're successful following that online assessment, you'll receive um, your video interview invitation um, within a couple of weeks. 
So it, it, there's not one set time when you will be undertaking those assessments. It depends when you make that initial application. Um, but in terms of our assessment centres, they will run towards the end of February and throughout March. I think that's everything. Yeah, I, th I think we're there then. So um, thank you to everybody that's attended. Uh, as I say, uh, it's great for you to give up your time to come and listen to us. I hope you found it useful. And thank you to our wonderful panel for being uh, really open and honest and sharing some, some really great insights. So on that note, uh, good evening, everybody. And again, uh, thanks for attending.